hey guys welcome to Walton weekly so this week this is episode 25 so yeah i thought that this would be a really long journey to get here but finally we're at episode 25 it actually didn't feel that long it didn't feel like i was you know having to grudge along i feel like this is one of the few things that i've found with this whole side project at first the side project was just like me making blog blog posts on my website walshami.com i've sort of gone off the blog post because i don't think that's a style of creating content that really like is me it's not like i've never really enjoyed writing i don't think i'm the best writer it feels forced and it feels like fake and i feel like it's an inefficient way to get information out and i don't think it's somewhere one that i can grow very fast and i don't think it's somewhere that people like i don't think many people have the tolerance or the attention span to read especially if the writing isn't amazing and my writing is not amazing so it's like yeah but i think listening to a podcast is much easier than writing just because of the medium you know it's just that's just how it is but yeah quick little update on the podcast um i'm a podiatry student from auckland new zealand um so right now we are sort of having exams for the next four or five weeks and my plan is maybe i'll get a few interviews in but interviews take a lot more time they can really disrupt my schedule so it's like if i am having to get up at 5 a.m to interview someone and then stay up till 12 working it's not too practical so yeah um Yeah, so that's basically the plan. I'm just going to be doing solo podcast episodes on different topics that I've researched and that I've tried to educate myself in or topics that I already know a decent amount about. Like um, I did did one on investing. I don't know everything about investing, but I know a decent amount and I think I know enough to give people a sort of beginner's introduction to investing. And that's something I'm incredibly passionate about. Go listen to that episode because you will honestly save your future. If you invest now, you'll save your life. Blah, blah, blah. I talked about that in the other episode. But yeah, um, I would also just like to say thanks to all my guests who have come on because a lot of them, they don't see the value in this podcast yet because it's like, it's still a, an extremely small podcast and they're giving up half an hour, an hour, even sometimes an hour and a half of their time to come on this little kid's podcast. Like they're just coming on, they like most of them don't know who I am. Some of them have been my friends like in real life and they know me. So they just like, it's hard for them to say no. And I don't, like, I don't want them to feel forced, but yeah, um, a lot of the people online, they don't know who I am. They're just coming on because they can see the value in it or they think it's a good opportunity or maybe like they don't know sort of how, what opportunities that this will lead to and then they make that time in their schedule and then they plan it out and they do it consi- and they do it with, um, they put in the time, yeah. So they put in an hour, an hour, hour and a half. They take that time out of their schedule. They like get to a place. They have a, you know, decent microphone with like headphones, you know, like whatever. So, um, yeah, thank you to all my guests and thank you to my friends and people that have like messaged me saying, good job, man, keep going. Like this is good. I like this, like all that kind of stuff. One thing I would like is more like negative feedback because like, I feel like a lot of my friends are like, yeah, man, this is great. Cool. But then it's, it's like, I don't know where I'm going wrong and where it's bad. And then, but some of the guests, some of them, when I ask them after the show, I'm like, Hey guys, what could I have done better? Where could I have improved? Some of them do give really good feedback because the people that I'm trying to interview are people that critique themselves because they are successful and they can, can they critique their sort of way of doing things, which I think is, it's, it's amazing the way that these people have succeeded. And some of them haven't gotten to where they want to get yet, but it's like, that's because their barriers, their um, vision for their life is so, is set, the bar is set so high, which is great. So yeah. Basically, this episode, I'm going to be talking about how to start a side project. Just got a call from one of my previous guests, actually. So, uh, yeah. Um, So, I would like to talk about how to start a side project, why to start a side project, the benefits, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, personally, I think everyone, especially if you're a university student, should have a side project of some kind because it has tons and tons and tons of benefits, like things you wouldn't even think of. Like the, even if you just, just have an Instagram where you just post things that you think are informational or you post how to study better, like things. I might do an episode on how to study if that's a good idea. Yeah. I'll get my sister on cause she gets good grades and she knows how to study properly. I don't really, but yeah. Um, yeah. So basically I think everyone should have a side project of some kind. So yeah, basically what I mean by a side project is a side project is like, say, my friend Bittersweet, he has a clothing brand that he created over the last like six, six, ish, six, seven ish, ish months. He's been making this clothing brand and sort of hustling at that. And now it's becoming something that he's really cherishing and really like it's a huge part of his life now. 
and it's brought him opportunities that he didn't think he'd have before. And my friend, the business kid, that is his full-time job now. His full-time job is his business. He is sort of like a marketing dude. He sells like um, social media plans and he sort of sells like, he sort of manages social media for people and then he manages marketing through social media and also like sort of different promotional videos and different promotional sort of things. So yeah, he sort of does a lot of advertising and marketing sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, what, what, are the, what are the benefits of starting a side project? Why? Why should I do this, James? Well, let me tell you. Personally, for myself, the benefits have been huge. I've met a bunch of people that I didn't think I'd ever even be able to get in contact with. And just by reaching out to people, even just through email, I'd got in touch with people like the Gymshark CEO, like um, Mo Samuels, he's someone who inspired me for ages, like and Julie Mack, like all these kinds of people. Um, also Jesse Driftwood, and like I've gotten to know my friends better that are doing these kind of things, like Bittersweet, The Business Kid, Chant, all these kinds of people that are doing things that have this mindset of productivity and have, and have this mindset of a huge vision for themselves. And surrounding yourself with those people really does change your outlook on life. But yeah, that's just for podcasts, because with podcasts, you do get to talk to a lot of people that are doing things that are quite inspirational. But what if you want to start a blog about a blog about music? Say my friend likes music and they want to start a blog about music. Is that a good idea? Yes, surely it is, because people can read what you are saying about, say, a particular song and then they can hear the song. Maybe there's a little widget that you can hear the song in and you click and listen to the song and say, oh, la di da, this is a nice song. And you, maybe you listen to it while you read the article or something like that. You make like a three-minute read article, whatever, like, you know. Um, but how do you start your side project? Well, it's relatively simple. I've asked many of my guests, do you know what they all say? They all say, they all say just start because what, what else can you do really? All you have to do is you, you figure out what you exactly want to do and that will change over time. Like I didn't know what I wanted this podcast to be at first. Now 25 episodes in, I have a relatively good idea. I want this podcast to be something that is entertaining, yes. Not really comedy, but I want it to be where some people get to know me and they get to enjoy hearing from me about certain topics that I think are interesting while also learning from the guests that I have and, and learning from the questions that I ask the guests and their responses to those questions. And that's sort of the general idea that I want this podcast to become. And sort of I think that it is becoming. And I think by episode 100, I'll probably have it knocked down pretty well. Episode 1000, I'll probably be like Joe Rogan. He actually just recently passed a thousand podcast episodes and they're all three hours long. It's ridiculous. That amount of content. That's a ton of a ton of content. So if you're if you're running out of podcasts to listen to, get into Joe Rogan's podcast. It's a good podcast. It's not too informational, but it is. It's like fun information. It's fun information, you know? So yeah. Basically the benefits. Um I mean you get to meet a whole bunch of new people. You get to sort of change your sort of mindset about a lot a lot of things because Something that you used to think as, as of work, like now when I record a podcast, that's not really work for me. Like say I've done like a three hour studying block and then I need, a, I need to have a break. One way I can have a break is I just sit down and record a podcast. I don't even have to post the podcast, but it's just something that I find fun and it's something that I find enjoyable. Now editing a podcast, that's a different story. I don't think I'd really enjoy editing podcasts too much, but it's like if I'm listening to a conversation or something that I'm really passionate about, the conversation, then yeah, that's something that I'm like, wow, cool. Because when I'm listening, if I get bored, then I know it's not a great podcast. Some of my podcasts I don't think have been the best, but I've put them out anyway because I believe sometimes, even if the quality is not 100%, like maybe that's just subjective to me. Maybe I just think it's not good because maybe I just wasn't interested in that conversation or maybe... It just wasn't a topic that really interested me or maybe I don't know I just didn't like the person for some reason maybe that's why but for the majority of the time I'm like listening to the podcast and I'm enjoying it and that sort of transfer transforms your whole idea about work and it, that also sort of makes you sort of realize how important your time is as well because since starting this I've realized how much I need to like plan my time like now I plan every single hour like mo sometimes I don't like sometimes I'm not planning every hour of my day just so I can have that freedom and sort of relax and sort of just chill out a little bit. But a lot of the time I am sort of planning one hour, two hour, three hour like slots of whatever I'm doing and just sort of making that productive time instead of wasting it like I normally would. Like back when I before I started this, I didn't realize how much you can do in an hour and how much you can do in 10 hours and like how short short an hour really is. But like what you can actually like if you have a 15 minute slot, make use of it. Like in 15 minutes, I could like clean up my room, do all my laundry, 
um, wash all the dishes downstairs and maybe shave. I don't know. Like you can get a lot of shit done in 15 minutes, but yeah. And I find like things like eating and things like showering have become such a nuisance just because it doesn't feel like productive time. But I know like they're things you have to do, but yeah. Um, yeah. So what are, what are some ideas of things that you can start or things that you can do? Um, like I said before, my, he started a clothing brand because he has always liked fashion and it's something that he likes. And that's, that's very important. It needs to be something that you like. If you don't like it, then you're not going to be consistent with it. Like there was a while ago where, when I was like, like I used to be a huge gamer. I've played like 200 days of, um, RuneScape, which is a fuck ton. Like that's so much. Imagine if I spent all that time working and said I would be fucking rich, but <laughs> I wasn't old enough to work at the time. This was when I was like. 14, 13, 12, 10, you know, all those kind of ages. Um, like I played it for years, but yeah, basically it has to be something that you like because if you don't sort of enjoy the thing that you're doing, like if I didn't, like that's with blogging, with blogging, yeah, I didn't really enjoy blogging. So it's something that I'm sort of like putting on the back burner. Maybe every now and then I'll put out a blog post, but it's like to grow, you need to be consistent. And I don't think I like enjoy being consistent with blogging. Because like I could easily like there was one time where I sat down and I wrote a two thousand word um, blog post about investing and about compound interest and and then I wrote another one about how compound interest works with social media as well and like I was having a blast but those that's because the topics I was writing about was something I enjoyed maybe that's where I need to take that but I just don't think written word is for me but maybe it is for you though maybe written word is what you want to be doing say as I said before you could create a blog about music. And then you play the music during the blog post, whatever. Or maybe you like riding horses, so you make a vlog, a vlog about riding horses and about how you ride your horse better. I don't know, like if you're a competitive horse rider, all that kind of stuff. Or maybe like even if you like video games, if you like video games, start a video game YouTube channel. But you've got to realize since everything is so oversaturated, like if you are going to start a fitness YouTube channel or a blogging or a um whatever a gym youtube channel or a video game youtube channel you've got to realize how oversaturated some um sort of spaces are like the fitness space is so oversaturated and it's oversaturated with the same kind of people because what when i look around and i look at the fitness space it's people like a lot of them it's hard to find unique people and you you get into the mindset of sort of brushing everyone off as the same and i'm guilty of that a lot of the time and when you look into them they are different but the thing is, what they have to focus on is producing unique content. And that's why I don't really focus on the fitness aspect. Because I think it has been covered to death. And I, I don't think there's much benefit. And I don't think it's something I'm, I'm passionate about. Like, like obviously, I do care about the principles of training. But I think training is something that, like, it's just a piece of the pie. Like, I don't think, personally, unless you're a professional athlete, then I don't think training should be your number one priority. Like, my friend Chant said, he, he said, like, it's, like a good piece to put on the cake but it is not the cake it's like yeah it's 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 obviously beneficial in so many ways and it, i think it helps you be more be more productive just because of the way it works and the way sort of that um it interacts with your brain if you've read the book spark and it like does all that kind of stuff but it is not the most essential thing but a lot of these people who are posting about fitness online is they're posting the same stuff what is progressive overload how to get bigger, how to get stronger, how to eat more, all that kind of stuff. And it's very like, it's very good information. And like, if you, if that's your goals, then that's exactly where you need to go. Like you need to go to people like Vitruvian physique and Mo Samuels and, um, David Laid, like people like that, they, they will show you exactly where to go. And then the thing is within them, they're all doing things differently because they all show that the reason I think that they're successful in their side projects, well, it's not really their side projects anymore is they all show their unique personalities. While as a lot of the people that go on and they like they vlog about fitness is they do it in a very monotone way. Like I'm guilty of this in my stories a lot of the time. I'll be like, I'll be film, I'll film like me doing some, some gym stuff. And then it'll be me like talking about it and like, yeah guys, I did some five by fives. It was really good. I felt I did bad on the fourth set, but then I got bit better on the fifth set. Like it was just like, a lot of the time I'm guilty as well doing the fifth stuff and like it's all very good me chatting about this stuff and like saying oh the, they need to do this they need to do that but it's like I haven't got a successful social media following yet either so 
I guess I'm not perfect. Maybe it's just a matter of time, but maybe there's significant errors in line. But that's one thing I don't think you should focus on too much is what I'm focusing on like sort of right now and sort of for the first year, like I don't, I'm trying to not focus on the numbers as much in the first year because once there's, there's this one person that I think you should be following if you're doing this kind of side project stuff is Gary Vee. Gary Vee does talk about sort of like you take advantage of the 18 hours you realistically have a day. If you want to sleep eight hours, reduce that to 16. You still have 16 hours a day. You go to school for five, you sleep for, you know, the eight hours. You go to sleep, you go to school for five, six hours, right? And then you eat for two hours, travel for two hours. That's 10 hours. You still have six hours. What are you going to do with those six hours? Are you going to watch TV for three hours? Play video games for three hours? You're going to shower? Yeah, that's one hour. Cool. Yeah. So you take away taking, you still have five hours after you've done all the things that are sort of necessary. And then I think one thing within that time is if you are listening to things like audiobooks and podcasts while you travel, then you're making use of even more of that time. So yeah, I'm sort of getting off topic and just sort of ranting. I hope, please let me know if I talk too fast because I feel like sometimes I just go blah, 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 and then no one knows what I'm on about. So yeah, it's just that simple. The first step to starting a side project is starting. You figure out what you want and then you figure out how to do it. Um, I'm going to go over how to start a podcast later in in this episode, but yeah. Um, Some other ideas. You could do a vlog, yeah, and try to be original. That's where I think I was going a while ago. But yeah, try to be original if it is something that a lot of people are doing. Try and sort of do it with um, authenticity. Don't copy anyone. That's one thing that I feared at the start of this podcast. It's a few episodes in. I looked at Tim Ferriss' podcast, and I was like, oh shit, am I copying Tim Ferriss? But now I've, like, I'm sort of distinguishing the differences and sort of the places that I'm different to Tim Ferriss and where I think I can improve on Tim Ferriss' model because it's a very used model, like interviewing people. Oh, how do you do this when it comes to like fit, when it comes to sort of interviewing people about fitness, about entrepreneurship, about creativity, all that kind of stuff. Like these people have been interviewed a thousand times about this kind of shit. It's like if you ask the fitness guy the same steroid question, they don't care. Like, they're going to give you the same cookie-cutter answer. It's like, that's one thing that I'm trying to sort of be unique is sometimes a lot of my questions are complete shit because I'm making them up on the spot. It's like, I'm like, hey, so blah, blah, blah. We, we were talking, like with um, Jesse Jushwood, we were talking about wedding photography. And then to transition from that, I asked the most random question about, um, like, I, I asked a question that I basically already asked, but then I sort of asked it in a slightly different way and that gave him a, he gave me a slightly different answer. And then it's like, that's one thing that I think I need to personally improve on is I need to improve on my podcast questioning skills because a lot of the time I don't have solid questions that I'm asking, but I don't think I want solid questions that I'm asking. Like personally, my style of podcasting is I don't want to have six questions that I want to ask during the podcast. And then like maybe I have one, two or three, one, two or three questions that I think are some things that I really should be asking, like. How did this all start? That's one of my favorite questions because it gets them to tell their story in their words from their point of view. And then maybe if you've viewed their story happening over time just by following them online, then you get to see what they thought about their story, which I think is quite an interesting thing, inspired a tiny bit by um, Tim Wilson because I was on the, fir- the only time I've ever been on TV was on his TV show, Seven Sharp. It's a segment called Take Me Home where basically he goes up to a random person on the street and he says, hey... Do you have an interesting story? Take me home and tell me about it. So then no one was saying yes to him up in this this town that we're nearby, Highbury, up in Highbury. And then I went up to him, up to him and I was like, hi, do you need anyone else to interview? Because I don't know what he's doing. So then I went and talked to him and yeah. And I feel like that in a way has inspired me to start this because I went out and took that opportunity. So yeah, um, other ideas, vlogging. You could create a, like a business of some kind is a great idea. I've been recently thinking of making some sort of supplement business or some sort of some sort of business where I'm making something that's unique. But like that's the main thing that I want to focus on is being unique. Because if you make the 600th fitness vlog, that's the same as every other fitness vlog. No one cares. No one cares for, for the first like one to three years. This is not my words. This is Gary Vee's words. But like no one cares for the first one to th- three years unless you have something special, super special about you. Like the majority of the time, no one gives a fuck and you have to be okay with that. Like you can't expect a huge following and you can't get discouraged because you don't have a huge following. It's incredibly hard to build a following on social media unless you're like, build a legitimate, genuine following on social media if you're not being genuine. 
But then I noticed the more genuine I am, the more I sort of put myself out there, the more of a positive response I am getting. And like, especially if I'm displaying my insecurities, and that's an episode that I actually want to do. An episode where I just go through and I talk about what I am personally insecure about, which is also inspired by Mo Samuels. And I'd also like to go over this whole thing of copying. Like, someone once said that copying is basically taking two already made ideas and smashing them together. And maybe that is true. Like, obviously, you've got to avoid copying anyone outright because then it's like you get no joy out of it people will catch you out one day and like it's not going to come off as authentic and it's not going to be successful in the long run there's no point in copying there's literally very very little point in copying just because it gives no benefits to either party involved it makes you look bad it makes you feel bad um but like if you want to take ideas from someone else maybe ask them like if, if it's a straight up your take on their idea like with the most Samuel's um, insecurities thing. If I am going to go and do it, I'll probably ask for permission from him. Just because I know him, I can just send him a text. It's like, and it's like, he is the one who inspired me to do that thing. So it's like, if he doesn't want me to do that, then I completely understand because it's a video that he put a lot of his energy into. And it's like, yeah, like if someone inspires you and you want to do something like them, ask them. If, if they don't reply and it is something very like them and it is something like, like um, Jesse Driftwood, he makes these stories that are very unique. I haven't seen anyone else make stories like this. And we talked about people copying his stories. And he said he personally doesn't really care because it's like even he had his own thing on copying. And basically he doesn't really see copying as a huge issue because unless you're like outright copying someone in a huge way, but if you're copying someone's style just a little bit, but you're merging it with your own style, even my, my latest guest, um, especially with photography, this is a huge thing. I've noticed all the photographers, they all agree that copying is not, like, it's very hard to just outright copy someone in photography. If you if you take elements of their style and blend it into your style or someone else's style, then I think that's great because you're creating your own style and that's, like, something you have to do. Like, at the start, you might, I think Jesse Driftwood said, I'll insert this, I won't, yeah, but basically he said that at the start you're probably going to be copying someone even if just subconsciously because you've been inspired by someone and now you're going to go and do that thing and you have to just go and do it. And it's like, you can, you're can you gonna probably end up copying someone. That's sort of the general gist of it. So yeah, um, I'm gonna go over how to start a podcast. So yeah, as you may have noticed, I've started a podcast. Um, this, is, this is something that I think when you do start a podcast, you have to sort of realize that you're putting yourself out there. And now I've, I've noticed so many benefits just in myself by starting a podcast. Like I've recently joined a new class at school. So it's like me, and there's like 30 of us in a class sort of for like three years. So we're going to be with, with the same class for the next three years. And I've noticed starting this podcast is, I didn't know, but very early on they found out about it and they like, they posted it on our like page and they were like, oh my God, what is this? And I was like really scared. But then it's like, none of them really cared. They weren't like judgy or anything. And that's something that you've got to know. You've got to know is like, when I say no one's going to care for the first one to three years is people really don't give a shit. People give a shit for the first like two weeks that you start something but then if you stay consistent and you keep doing it no one's going to keep judging you because people start to admire you because people start to be like oh wow i wish i had that creative outlet and like if they do continue to judge you and be like oh blah 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 you're such a faggot why do you do this oh my god you look so stupid then it's like they're probably just being jealous because they don't have their own thing and the majority of people are going to be extremely positive about it but I've heard they're only extremely positive until they see it, see it succeeding. And then there's a lot of issues about like people trying to leech and people trying to just push you down because they don't want you to rise up. But now, like at this point in my, in my podcast, there's no sort of issues of it being that successful because it's not. It's just me reaching out to people. And like even like if we don't, like even if I ignore listeners, which is not something that I really want to focus on, like I want to listen to the listeners, but I want to look at the number, if you understand what I mean. But like, even just through that, I think I've had success in the first, I don't know how long this podcast will go, 20 weeks probably. Um, I think I've had success in that time because I've reached out to people and had conversations with people that I never thought would be possible. Like, I was recently watching the League of Legends World Championship and I actually was just watching and I saw one of the people that I interviewed up there on the stage because they're the coach of one of the teams at Worlds. And that's something that I'm like, wow, I can't believe I did that. Like... And it, maybe it's not that amazing, but it's like you get in contact with those people and that those people get you in contact with other people. And like one thing that it, like if I do get unmotivated, I sort of realize that if I look at someone and I've contacted someone, like say I've contacted, I have 
briefly just through Instagram spoken to the Gymshark CEO, right? And the Gymshark CEO has spoken and shook hands with Richard Branson. I don't know how much they've talked, but yeah. So now I'm basically two people away from Richard Branson. And that means like three people away from probably a lot of successful people because there's Richard Branson. And then with Tim Wilson, it's like, with Tim Wilson, I, that is one step away from a lot of famous people because he has met a lot of famous and successful people because that's just the nature of his job. And then a lot of other people. Okay, my camera just shut off. All good, I'll just keep going. But yeah, so there's a lot of like, yeah, so basically to start, you need an idea to start a podcast. To start a podcast, you need to have that original idea. Like, oh, what am I going to do my podcast about? There's actually a podcast about ideas for podcasts. Um, I'll just find it. The podcast is called The Unmade Podcast. Basically, it's sort of a comedy podcast about ideas of podcasts you could make. And there are actually some really good ones in there that you, like, they, they're okay with you using them just because they've said them. Or maybe, I don't know if they're okay. But I assume because they're just saying it to the world, someone, some people are going to go and make those podcasts. If you don't know what you want your podcast to be, go and look at that or go and look at different podcasts. Listen to a lot of podcasts and sort of realize what sort of podcast do you want to be doing? Do you want one where you just sit down with a friend of yours and you discuss current events or you sit down with someone you admire like like how I do like I I sit down with people that or I Skype or sit down with people that I admire or people that I look up to and I, the people that I think have a great work ethic or they have great success in their career or their thing or whatever and then I sit down and try and extract their ideas um, and sort of how they've done what they do and why they do what they do sort of thing but maybe you want a podcast where you just sit down with a random guest and just chat, like how Joe Rogan, he just sits down with a random guest, chats about random shit. Maybe they even, like, they smoke and they get drunk on that podcast. Like, they just chill out, have a good time. Like, the idea with that is sort of, that's more of the kind of podcast where you're listening, sort of just to have a laugh, maybe feel like you're in the conversation. Like, it sounds weird when you say podcasts are sort of like, you feel like you are in the conversation and like, one of the next episode after this is going to be one about sort of depression and all that. And when I was depressed, I found when I got lonely, listening to podcasts helped me because you're basically in a conversation with other people. Maybe you can't con- contribute to the other conversation, but it's yeah, but yeah. Um, maybe you could do a podcast about food. There's actually a podcast called it's completely slipped my mind, but it's a great podcast. It's about sort of different. Um, ingredients so they'll be like okay episode 28 avocados avocados are cool avocados are actually a fruit blah 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 blah. all this stuff about avocados then they'll talk about avocados for a few minutes and yeah that's like the podcast and i listened to that for a long time because they were just i listened but not because i cared about avocados i listened because i cared about the personality um yeah so one thing that i've noticed with podcasts is the reason why you stay is because you like someone's personality um, so like there's this podcast that I listen to that is extremely successful and they don't do it that professionally. Like they, the thing, they don't try to make it seem professional, but I know they do it really professionally. It's called Hello Internet. Hello Internet is a podcast where it's this guy called CGP Gray and this guy called Brady Heron. They talk about a wide range of things. They talk about, um, like a lot of it's just dumb things and they're having like dumb conversations about, um, Trafalgar Square, how they don't let you climb on the lions anymore or... Um, there's this building in Melbourne called the Big Black Stump. <laughs> that's what they call it. And like, it's one of those podcasts where you really enjoy their personality. And I think that's really cool. And yeah, that's like, that's why I like that podcast because they do it in a way that makes you care about the people involved and they don't talk about sad issues ever. They only talk about positive issues, which is really cool. Well, they don't like, they do a lot of complaining on the podcast, but it's not like real complaining. Like it's like, oh, there's these things called hot stoppers at Starbucks, and they would they had like three episodes where they would just talk about, and these are, these podcasts are like two hours long. They would talk about it for like a twenty minute segment, three times about how the Starbucks that Gray went to did not have any more hot stoppers, or they don't have hot stoppers in front of the counter now. You had to ask people for it, and they talked about that for so long, and it's entertaining. Why is it entertaining? Because the pe- people's personalities are entertaining. And that's something that I think is quite cool. But yeah, I hope I'm not just like rambling on, but yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of ideas you can do. It's, you could make it just a chat between you and a friend. Personally, if I was going to change the style of my show, I would sort of change it to just me. And I like another show that I was thinking of doing is 
what like a research show where I go and I pick a topic like I pick progressive overload or I pick um, chemicals in fitness like not steroids like things like um, supplements like HMB BCAAs all that kind of stuff and pick about like which ones are actually useful and which ones are not and sort of look into that so like right now I take caffeine pills people might look at them and they'll be like what the fuck are you doing that's crazy but it's like if you look at the doses of caffeine it's not really that great that crazy because you know you might die if you take 500 milligrams within an hour but if you take 200 milligrams before a workout that's going to boost you up and give you quite a good advantage well i guess advantage against yourself but yeah so that's sort of yeah and then how do you how do you record a podcast what do you need to start a podcast well literally all you really need is there's a free program if you're on windows there's a free program called it's called let me just get it up it's called audacity it's called audacity basically what it does is there's an effect in it that takes silences say if you have a one second silence it brings it down to 0.5 seconds or whatever but if you have a 20 second silent brings it down to 0.5 seconds basically it speeds your podcast out up without making your podcast um like chipmunk sounds like without making your person take like this blah, 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 blah. it just sort of makes it um it organically speeds it up is that's something i guess you could say it um that's one thing that i think is a really good program you can also edit in there and you can do all sorts of stuff in there personally i just edit in garage band and that's a free program as well so whether you're on mac or pc it's completely free but you do have to sort of have a little income to start a podcast because i pay 14.99 a month i think if you pay it up if you pay the whole year up front then it's like a, you, you get like you only pay ten dollars a month but you pay in one lump sum so you pay like 120 whatever like you know like it's it's not a huge amount but it's like the same as like a gym membership it's that sort of amount except not weekly it's like once a month you pay so yeah it's less than a gym membership but it's decent so you pay 14 dollars a month for every year yeah um so that's what that is is that's hosting that's where you host your files so people can go and download your files or that's where itunes goes and grabs all your files from and then puts them on itunes and itunes basically itunes doesn't hold your files they sort of hold a little link and then that little link links to your files it's sort of like icloud basically icloud for your podcasts the reason you can't just put it on your own website is say one day you get two thousand people extra listening to your podcast um your site's going to crash and then no one's going to listen to your podcast when it's most important and that's sort of why you need hosting and it sort of it makes it very easy to submit to itunes and all that kind of stuff one thing that's annoying in New Zealand is you can't get it on Google Play. So if you're listening to this and you're like, James, why don't you get it on Google Play? It's like, oh, I can't really because for some reason New Zealand doesn't allow you to. I don't know. It's it's just a weird thing that they haven't set it up yet. I don't know. But really, the majority of my listeners are on iTunes, sort of Apple podcast. So, yeah. So you need to have hosting. That's one thing. But before you even get to hosting is you need recording. So... With recording, what do you what is recording? You just need to get a program like Audacity or GarageBand if you're on Mac. I'm on a Mac, so I use GarageBand. Is you press the R button or whatever it is on Audacity, and you start talking. What sort of microphone do you need? Personally, if you don't know if you're going to keep this up, if you think this is just going to be an experiment, I recommend personally that you just don't you don't go and buy a three hundred dollar microphone. That's what I did. I went and bought a three hundred dollar microphone for the first episode, and I recorded that that quickly that, that's how fast it took me to record now yeah i'm 25 episodes in i'm pretty sure i'm going to take continue for like then at least the very the rest of uni the rest of the university i'm in my basically the end of my first year um so with recording you press the record button and you talk but you've got to know what you're going to talk about so you've picked your idea that's what you're going to talk about so then you sort of before you start recording you make a plan you say okay i'm talking to um jesse driftwood today Jesse, blah, blah, blah. Jesse is a photographer, filmmaker. Uh, what sort of things could I ask him about? Um, well, really, you could ask him about how does he do photography? Why does he do photography? What sort of photography? What's something you didn't expect in photography? All sorts of questions. That's sort of how I format my plan. I sort of get all the things that I know about him. Like, I know he's a photographer, filmmaker. He did do a few vlogs. He does a lot of... He does some very creative Instagram stories. He's a father. Um... He involves his kids in his Instagram stories sometimes, which is sometimes a debatable issue, which is something you want to talk about. You want good conversations to happen. That's the idea of a podcast. So, yeah. Um, 
yeah, basically you need to figure out somewhere to, so you've got, you've got your recording, you've got your hosting. And now one thing that I think is one of the easiest yet like hardest parts is say you've got everything ready to post your podcast um, and you're like ready to get your podcast out there. Um, you need to advertise and promote your podcast. You don't need to pay for anything. What I did is I have an Instagram and I post promos on there. I post like one minute promos, which I think is a really good idea because it sort of shows, okay, here's a minute of the best of Walsh and Weekly or a, a, a interesting segment or a funny segment about a certain topic for, with a guest. Um, and then people just listen to that and they're like, oh yeah, this is cool. Where can I listen to more? And they look in the caption and I say, you can listen on Apple, blah, blah, blah. You can listen on Podbean, blah, blah, blah. You can listen on Overcast. You can listen on YouTube. All these kind of places that you can listen to the podcast. So yeah, it's relatively easy to listen. And you sort of, you have to make that known and you have to find a way to get out there. So yeah, um, I recommend when you start your podcast, you start your Instagram and you sort of try to grow your Instagram as much as possible. If you have to do it in sort of a follow for follow way, then that's fine. That's completely fine because you've got to start somehow. It's not that easy to like grow on Instagram these days. Well, it's not that easy to get legitimate followers on Instagram and sort of you've got to realize every follower is an opportunity to get another follower. Because if they like it, then it might come up in their feed and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. Um, and one thing that I think that I really want to drill home is you have to be consistent. The amount of people that I've seen start a YouTube channel and be like, oh yeah, guys, I posted on Facebook about my new YouTube channel, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to vlog every week. I'm going to vlog my life and make funny YouTube videos. And then they do it for two weeks and then they never do it again. And you ask them about it and they're like, oh, what? oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, no, no, no. Like for my YouTube channel, it was sort of off and on. Like I didn't have a good schedule. But now I know for podcasting, I have to release one at least every week. Maybe a bonus one on Wednesday, but at least one every week on Sunday because it's called Walsham Weekly. It's not Walsham Bi Weekly, it's Walsham Weekly. So yeah, um, be consistent. Sort of don't fuck around with it. Just get one episode out when you need to get it out and sort of don't, um, don't waste people's time. Like don't tell people that you're going to post every week and then post what don't like don't get into the habit that I see so many people doing even if it's just an Instagram they get into the habit where they post five times for the first week they post so much and then the second week they post three times and then the next week they apologize because they haven't been posting and then they get get really into it they post two times the next week and then they stop and it's like if you're gonna have to keep apologizing to your followers for not posting then don't post at all just do something else that you're actually going to do because this is, goes back to actually enjoying what you're doing. If you don't enjoy your side project, you're not going to be doing it. And like, it's more work than you think it'll be if you want to do it well. Like, people know when you're half-assing it and when you're sort of, like, yeah, like when you're half-assing it and when you're putting a lot of work and time into it. Because people, like, when I look at my best episodes, people give me feedback and they say, wow, I love this episode. This was great. I really enjoyed the question you asked here or blah, 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 like, blah, blah, blah. And like... On the episodes that I think are really good, I get good feedback and I get that response. But then on the episodes that I think are not that good, I don't really get that response. It's sort of, yeah. And also, if you are like putting it out there on your personal social media, like I have done that a bit, and a lot of people aren't going to associate themselves with it because it, it is like so you're, you're being different and you're being weird. Like you've got to realize that, like with podcasting, especially, is you're being the guy who's talking into a microphone for 40 minutes and posting it online. Like, you've got to pre be prepared to have people be like, haha, what the fuck? They're not going to, like, come up to you and confront you about it, and they're not going to be like, what a fucking weirdo. But people are going to going to say things. I've I've had very, very little. I've had mainly positive feedback, but I've had a few people that have been like, you're a fucking joke. And you've got to be prepared for that, because if you sort of cry about it, then you've got to still realize no one gives a fuck. No one cares, apart from the people who do care. And that's what you've got to realize. If those people who care think that you're doing something, you're doing it well and you're getting good feedback from them, keep going. And then if people you don't know start giving you feedback, still definitely keep going. Because if those people that you barely know and that you've barely talked to in your life come up to you and be like, hey, that thing you've been doing, that's cool. And eventually you are going to get people like that. For the first like month, you're not going to get anyone because people are like, okay, he's going to quit soon. People wait for you to quit. And if you don't quit and you, and you keep going, people will be like, oh shit, he's actually doing it. He's serious about this. Yeah, and that's one thing you've got to do. So, but you've got to realize, like with, with blogging, 
I didn't get much of a positive response because it wasn't something that I took seriously. Like I half-assed it, I saw it as a job and I didn't enjoy it, so it didn't go anywhere. But now with podcasting, I can feel it going places. Like it's obviously going to be very, very slow. Like I'm planning for a three year like thing before I can actually make it like a thing, make it actually like either make it have an income or make it sort of reach high profile guests, like even more high profile that I've gotten. I think a lot of the high profile guests that I've already gotten have been like luck, but it's also been a lot of work pitching and like pitching 500 guests and then you get three responses and then two of those cancel, but you get the one really good guest and that's sort of what you got to do. So yeah, be prepared for a lot of work, a lot more work than you thought it would be, but also be prepared for a lot of more, a lot more benefits than you thought there would be. So yeah, um, I'll probably finish it off there. I'd love if you guys would leave a review. I hope you guys stuck through this whole episode. It was might might have been a bit of a ranty episode, but a lot of these are. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'd love if you would leave a review on iTunes. That is literally my blood. I breathe that shit. Um, Subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. Uh, check me out on Instagram. That's where I do my advertising and promoting of this podcast. And you'll know when a new episode is out. So, yeah. See you guys. And thank you very much for listening.